Up with Crim begins now. Here at 7 o'clock, school is canceled after an overnight fire in North Spokane. We're giving you a look at the scene live right now this morning on North Alberta Street. This morning, the person who called it in says they heard an explosion. We have the latest on the active investigation to determine the cause. Drop it! Drop it! Drop the gun! Newly released body cam footage of the 2019 Coeur d'Alene 4th of July shooting is giving a mother hope. This morning, she, te she tells us why she has to say about the ruling that found her son guilty of aggravated assault on three police officers. And hate crimes against Asian Americans continue to be on the rise today. This hatred, uh, racism is a virus. It is a disease. This morning, the former governor of Washington is speaking out. Taking you outside early on this morning as clouds are starting to work their way back in. But still, it's a beautiful sunrise. We want to give you the latest on that breaking news this morning. An early morning fire has burned through the majority of St. Charles Elementary School in North Spokane. School is now closed as we welcome you. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Up With Cram. I am Joshua Robinson. Now, fire crews tell us that flames were 15 to 20 feet high, towering through the roof. At least 47 people were on scene at one point, helping put those flames out. Now, new this morning here at 7, the roads surrounding the school and the nearby church are now open. We have heard from the person who called it in, who says they heard an explosion. But crews are still working to determine what led up to this fire. No explosion has been confirmed so far. However, the battalion fire chief did confirm with us that a majority of the school has been damaged. Crews say their priority this morning was to protect the church nearby. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported as an active investigation is underway. School, uh, students rather will not be able to go to school this morning and we'll continue to keep you updated here on Up With Krem along with Krem.com and our Krem2 mobile app. But let's look outside right now. Jeremy, you look like you're just having a great time outside right now. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful morning. Temperatures yeah. are on the mild side. 37, are you kidding? It's great. We're not supposed to do this. For about another month and a half, that would be very normal at the beginning of May. So uh, come the start of May, let's talk about today. Let's talk about this, the uh, 18th of March, 37 degrees right now. And that's how we kick things off. It's a beautiful start to the day and temperatures in the mid 30s for just about everyone. We're down to 30 there in Sandpoint. We do have a couple of clouds starting to work their way in. You can see those down to the south. And if I look down to the south, I can see some of those clouds in the sky. And I do think they kind of move in today. So it's going to be a mix of clouds and sun as we head through the day today. That precedes our cold front that arrives tonight and brings us some overnight showers that will linger in some areas into Friday morning. So just know that that's the possibility as temperatures climb. Later today, we are in the low 60s. That's 60s for just about everyone in the inland northwest. And we normally don't get here until the first week of May. So this is a very May-like day as we say hello to March 18th. We will check back in with you a little bit later for that full forecast, Jeremy, here at 7.03 this morning. Vaccine appointments at the Spokane Arena are full. This is coming after Safeway announced it would partner with the Washington State Department of Health to run the clinic. People with an appointment should use the Boone Street entrance to the arena, and you should also arrive a few minutes before your appointment time to complete your check-in process. And once you're inside the arena, you will receive a COVID-19 screening questionnaire and be directed to wait in an area to receive your vaccine. People should also plan to wait 15 to 30 minutes of observation after their appointment. Meanwhile, high-risk workers in Washington now qualify for the vaccine. People eligible include critical workers in grocery stores, agriculture, schools, and child care, corrections, transit, and law enforcement. Pregnant women who are 16 and older will also be eligible, along with people living with a disability that puts them at higher risk. This week, we also have heard from a Safeway clerk about what it means for grocery store employees to get their dose of the vaccine. We were there every day and you had that chance. You had the exposure every single day. That was our job and that's what we had to do. So we just kept going. But it's it's nice to have this extra little bit of protection. If you'd like more information, you can text the word vaccine to 509-448-2000. 
Drop it! Drop it! Drop the gun! For the first time, we are seeing the moments that led up to officers shooting at a man in Coeur d'Alene on 4th of July in 2019. Tyler Rambo was 18 years old when he got into a confrontation with police that left him without legs. His gun went off during the encounter and a jury recently found Rambo guilty of three counts of aggravated assault on a police officer. Rambo's mother says she believes the video you're seeing right now proves he's innocent. Now, Nicole Ellis, who is Rambo's mother, showed us this footage, which was played in court during her son's trial. She says the video clips are from the defense attorney, who says the full video was not shown in court. The jury did rule that Rambo was not guilty of attempted murder and aggravated assault. But Ellis says this new video proves her son did not intentionally fire a gun at police. It's a very short video. It happens very fast, and he turns around. And he puts his left arm out, you know, to show that he's not trying to do anything. And then he's tased. Where was he supposed to get down? Where was he supposed to do anything? It was only seconds after he turned around and they tased him. Coeur d'Alene Police Chief Lee White says the prosecutor's office has asked the department to not release or comment on the body camera video right now because Rambo has not been sentenced. There's also an ongoing civil lawsuit right now, but only a tort claim has been filed so far. The police chief says he has seen the full video from that night and he believes his officers acted reasonably and appropriately. Right now, the man charged in a deadly shooting rampage out of Atlanta is scheduled to be in court. Six of the eight victims from the Georgia shooting are Asian, but investigators say the suspect claims the killings were not racially motivated. Now, before the attack in Atlanta, the conversations were already underway about a disturbing, growing trend. According to a study from the Center for Study of Hate and Extremism at California State University, hate crimes against Asian Americans jumped 149 percent from 2019 to 2020 in 16 of America's largest cities. According to a report from the group Stop AAPI Hate, nearly 4,000 incidents were reported between March 19th of last year and February 28th of this year, and the majority of them involved verbal harassment and shunning meaning the deliberate avoidance of Asian Americans. Now these reports do continue to pour in all over the country, but take a look at your screen. This is 76 year old Xiao Shen Xie. Yesterday morning, she was attacked by a stranger in San Francisco while she was waiting to cross a street. The 76 year old says she immediately felt her instincts kick in to defend herself. And while she did suffer injuries and required medical attention, her attacker ended up being taken to the hospital. She candidly spoke with our sister station in the area as her daughter and grandson helped to translate. As you guys see, she is extremely terrified. She's terrified to even step out. Shea's daughter also says her mother cannot see out of that left eye and hasn't been able to eat. They hope time will heal the physical and emotional wounds, but they say this incident is one that has scarred her family for life. Former Washington Governor Gary Locke says dismissing race as a factor in the Atlanta shootings actually creates more fear. Locke also says it downplays the racism Asian Americans have experienced, not just during the pandemic, but for centuries. This hatred, uh, racism is a virus. It is a disease. And if left unchecked, uh, it can only spread and really infect people's hearts and minds and souls. Locke says it is good to see so many groups speaking out against hate and violence but that he would like to see more. Here at 7.09, it's time for your morning rush. More news in less time. U.S. and Canadian officials have announced they plan to do a little spring cleaning to help eradicate Asian giant hornets. The first ne nest turned up last year in Whatcom County, and soon 1,500 new traps will go up across the county. Even more planned for British Columbia. So to me, hanging a trap actually protects you. It lets you know that there's something in the area and contains it in such a way that, um, you know, you could then call either Paul or myself and we can do something about it. The public also is being asked to help by putting up homemade traps with a one-to-one -one mix of brown sugar and water. The Koi Pond in Manitou Park will undergo a water conservation project this month. 
At a cost of more than $200,000, the city says the project will save about 16 to 18 million gallons of water annually. Crews will be replacing and upgrading pond pumps and plumbing, among other projects. The koi will remain in the pond for the majority of the project and all existing plantings and landscapes will be protected. The pond is expected to reopen in July. For the second year in a row, the July Mish Pow Wow is canceled due to the pandemic. The Pow Wow is held annually in July. It is one of the largest Pow Wows in the whole nation. The Coeur d'Alene Casino, who normally hosts the event, says, quote, we have decided to cancel this year's event due to its size and the fact that so many travel from all over the country for it. That's your Morning Rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. Coming up after the break, Nicole Hernandez joins us live from an arcade downtown. Nicole, we're going to be watching your screens again. Oh, she's busy. She's busy. Do you want to give us a sneak peek? Oh, yeah, we started the morning on pinball and we are going to finish the morning on pinball. I'm doing pretty good this time compared to last time. Um, this arcade place is amazing. It's called the Jedi Alliance. They have over 120 games and they're actually a church. Oh, I died. So I'll, I'll tell you all about that and how special this place is coming up here in the next few minutes. I was just going to say you were doing so well, Nicole. Hey, in our next half hour, Mama Jeannie from the restaurant De Bali also joins us on Up With Cram to share what she's making for you to enjoy during the great dine out.